the scariest moment you ever had on stage? We were in Santiago, Chile, and we'd, we'd gone on late in Bogota, Colombia, and some people got hurt and stuff like that. So we get to Santiago, and the, the military comes, and he says, he's got a big machine gun. He says to our tour manager, if Axel leaves the stage early, we will shoot and kill him. <laughs> Axel was in rare form. Perfect set, perfect time, good show. <laughs> but he was a little nervy, nerve wracking. So what exactly happened in Chile that caused Matt Sorum to tell that story? And that's what we're going to talk about on today's episode of Guns N' Roses True Story. Now, even before Guns N' Roses played South America in the fall of 1992, Slash had already talked about the hysteria that was going on in the continent and what lied ahead for the band. Yeah, that's going on in South America about us coming over there is sort of apparently unequal, you know? Like, we've sold an amazing amount of tickets in an amazingly fast amount of time compared to the acts that usually go over there. So we're just going to South America. I don't know if we're going to call back, to, <laughs> call back, you know, and say, you know, this is where we're at. I mean, because we're that's a whole different country altogether, and you just want to just go and focus on playing there. So um, we'll see how things develop. I don't, I don't know if if anybody in the states is going to hear from us for a while. Yeah, I mean, we, I, I think everybody's probably sick of us at this point. Anyway. You know, so yeah, I'd be glad to let us go away for a while. <laughs> now, when Guns N' Roses went to South America in 1992, trouble was pretty close behind. When they played Venezuela, the band was able to narrowly escape a military coup that held some of the band's equipment hostage. Then their next set of shows that happened in Colombia, Guns were supposed to perform two shows. They were only able to play one show because of the fact that their equipment was back in Venezuela, and the band almost got taken hostage because of that. Now things didn't get any easier when they went to Chile next. So too much stuff was already going on and 48 hours later they did a show in Santiago, Chile and as soon as Axel arrived he got hounded by paparazzi and at one point Axel actually attacked a cameraman and broke his camera and it made the nightly news in Chile. To make matters worse the stadium where Guns N' Roses were playing had been the site of mass executions which was unbeknownst to Axel until just literally minutes before the show, and at that point Axel had no interest in playing the show. So here's Matt Sorum telling the story of what went down. I remember what happened was we knew about it, but no one wanted to say anything to Axel. Mm -hmm. So when we got to the stadium, someone started telling Axel the story mm -hmm. of the military, military overthrowing the Chilean government yeah. and killing all the dissidents, uh, dissidents, right? Dissidents. Yeah. yeah. And so Axel freaked out. He's like, I'm not playing and blah, blah, blah. And I remember happening backstage, the military was there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Military. Yeah, I know. And basically Axel was in his dress room and the head of the military went to our tour manager, John Reese and Doug Goldstein and said, if Axel doesn't go on stage and perform, we're going to shoot and kill him. <laughs> in so many words. So basically, they were threatening us because they were afraid of a riot. Because we just had a riot in Bogota, Colombia, remember? We had a huge riot. Somebody got killed. You know, because people rioted and, you know, it was a big gig. It was like 60,000 people. I know, and it was the first time you were there. So, it was like so we were all a little nervous. You know, I remember being backstage going, oh, this is, this is crazy, you know. And uh, they went in and he told Axel, and Axel came right out. We did a great show, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. And I remember we had trouble with our airplane there. Do you remember our airplane got confiscated? I can't remember that too. Yeah. Uh, really? The they, uh, federales went into our room then and checked, uh, checked our rooms and found some drugs in one of the rooms. And our airplane got confiscated. We were on the front page of the paper. So, a lot of stuff going on. It was a little bit creepy because uh, of the whole vibe around it, you know? And things, of course, didn't get any easier when the band tried to get on stage. So according to Craig Doeswalt's book, Welcome to My Jungle, the band went on stage two hours late. And even on top of that, the Chilean media reported that Axel was drunk prior to the show. They also reported that drugs were discovered in the band's hotel rooms. And according to Doeswalt, this was not even close to true. He claims that Axel rarely drank on the road, and he might have had a glass or two of champagne on occasion, but that was basically it. 
Axel rarely drank on the entire tour, and he was basically focused on getting his life straightened out. Plus, both Doug Goldstein, who was the manager of Guns N' Roses, and the manager of the hotel at the Sheridan where the band stayed, denied the accusations. But nonetheless, officials from the Chilean Department of Investigation came to the band's hotel floor and checked the rooms for drugs. Luckily, nothing was found, but there was a scary moment for everybody in the entourage uh, when that happened. Now, specifically, when they were checking Craig's room, he said, I kept envisioning that somebody would plant drugs in my mattress and that I would go to jail in Santiago for the rest of my life, and Midnight Express came into my mind. Damn, I hate that movie. I swore the next time a drug search took place in my room, I would be much more prepared. Now, Duff talked in his first book, It's So Easy and Other Lies, about how they dealt with some of these customs agents and drug searches. He said, we had a guy who flew ahead of us and greased the customs agent's palms. I don't remember customs people ever boarding our plane, though our hotel in was raided in Chile. Not that there was any stupid mother effers amongst us. We never smuggled drugs from one country to another. We could always get whatever we needed locally. He also said that Axel tried to reach out to me a few times. One time on tour in South America, he called me from his hotel room and Stephanie Seymour was visiting him and my wife Linda was with me. He said, hey, why don't you come down to our room and we'll have dinner. We'll just have a nice time. We had a relaxed dinner and acted like adults. I thought we might be creating grounds for getting together again. And if it stays like this, I thought to myself, maybe I can dig myself out of uh, and maybe I'll have people to depend on. Half an hour later, after Linda and I left the dinner, Axel was throwing chairs in the lobby of the hotel and trying to fist fight some guy. Now looking at the concert, there was two incidents that happened of fans throwing shit on stage. The first one was during Live and Let Die, which kind of Axel brushed off but told the fans to stop it. And then during Civil War, he almost walked off stage. So that does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Have you guys seen the full 92 Chili show? Let me know in the comment section. And what stories would you like to see featured in future episodes of Guns N' Roses True Story? Let me know in the comment section. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And go check us out at gnrcentral.com for the latest and greatest Guns N' Roses news. And to see more videos just like this sticker. Hey, this is Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses. And you're watching GNR Central. Yeah! <laughs>